This is Juliana Ranikobris, and I'm here at the Hilton Hotel in Laguito, which is a, an area of Cartagena. And I'm with uh, Lucero, who uh, is a writer. Well, actually, she, was, she is or was a journalist, uh, originally from Cali. But you've lived in Cartagena, haven't you? You said for four years? W when was that? Yes. When was that? Um, I used to live in Cartagena. I spent almost uh, four years. I left Cartagena two years ago. Uh huh. So, uh, why, I, why did you leave Cartagena? Any particular reason? There's, there was no reason. No, I, you just left. You came and you went. Yes, and I used to live in Bogota first. Yes. Uh, several years, and one day I decided to come here for some reason that I don't know exactly. Okay. And one of the ideas that I had when I decided to come here, it was to know the Palenque. Okay, ho hold on a minute. Um, so, you uh, trained as a journalist, right? Right. In, uh, were you with a newspaper or a magazine? Both. Um, I used to work in newspapers and magazines, newspapers like El Tiempo, magazines. Uh, uh, I published some contributions to a magazine like uh, Don Juan, or is a product of El Tiempo, uh, editorial Was this house. in Bogota or Cali? This is in Bogota. Okay, okay. Um, uh, credencial, I have some, uh, 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 some articles in Credencial, Carousel, uh, Playboy, uh, Rolling Stone. That's a bit of a and co a special contrast. special cover in, in The Guardian in Ingl Ingl England. In England, in yes. England. And uh, you're about to get married to an Englishman, in fact. And how, how did you meet him? Is he also connected with writing or journalism? Uh, yeah, but not directly. He used to work in um, uh, Associate Press, but not directly as a journalist. He was more in, in uh, developed of um, statistics or products for uh, internet online okay. to launch uh, and specifically about sports. We met here by random, by coincidence. Uh -huh. I was living in the city 48 hours before I leave. Right. And he came here by coincidence. It was not the plan to visit Colombia. He were coming through Central America. Uh -huh. And his friends uh, convinced him to to come to Cartagena. To, exactly. And we cross. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Charming. Romance at the fort. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me, um, you, you mentioned Palenque, and of course uh, most people won't know what Palenque is. Palenque is uh, it's a village, isn't it? Or is it a little town? It's a small village. It's a small. small village and it's got its own patois, Cre Creole patois, hasn't it? Yeah. In, in language. Is uh, uh, their language is uh, they they uh, they speak Spanish uh, or Castellano, and they have um, their own language, palenquera, yes. which is a mix between uh, uh, some structures and words from Bantu family, linguistic family, and Castellano. Uh, when you say Bantu, you mean in, in Africa? Yes. Right. So uh, it's uh, connected, of course, with the slave trade. So you're saying that the original slaves uh, during the time of the conquistadores was, were Bantus. Is, is that correct? Did I understand that? No, sorry. No? I didn't no. get that. Could you... Uh, 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 the origin of the slaves... Yes during the time of the conquistadores yes. were th they were coming from africa yes. do you uh, i don't know where the bantus come from where do they come from well this is interesting which part thing. of africa the the this is a utopic uh, goal for uh, this community to get uh, what is exactly the the point where they are coming from africa for some uh, researchers, it was an utopia because Cartagena used to be like a Babel torre, tower, tower of Babel, uh, many languages because slaves came here from all over, especially the west of Africa. You know how oh. huge is Africa. Right. However, through the language of ethno-linguista researching, it was possible to find something that surprised the scientific word about the origin 
specific of, of this community after 300 years. Right. Well, um, the, when you gave the lecture the other evening, uh, we spoke to uh, one of the musicians who is from Palenque, and he said that he had been to Senegal, and uh, when he spoke P Palenque, or Palenquero, exactly. uh, they understood him. Did you know that? Uh, no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they bo both 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 the guys went. Yeah, they yeah, say that were uh, talking at your lecture, and uh, they said, well, one of them, the one in the Senegalese shirt, which is how because we commented on how nice his shirt was, and he proudly said he'd bought it in Senegal, and they'd understood his patois. They so, say so. Yeah, they have the. Yeah. Um, Idealistic idea that uh, they, wherever in Africa they go, uh, they will be understand, understood. Sorry, understood. Uh, however, it's not exactly, but that is the magician of, of the book of, of their stories. Okay. Let's see the cover it's of your book because it's got a wonderful photo. Right. Uh, how long did it take you to write this book? Uh, you know, to do the research and then write the book. About. El sueño africano is uh, the African dream, yes? Yeah, it, about, it takes uh, three, almost four years. Four years? Yes. And you were doing research? Yes. Uh, and where were you doing the research? Was it here in Cartagena? Yeah, uh, books, uh, reference from is, is, is historiadores, uh, people who... Historians. Historians, exactly ethnolinguistics uh, but uh, my ba the, my first source is the people is the testimonies that is the most important for me because i was not pretending to make an another academic book so it's oral history yeah, you, exactly. you went to the village and you spoke to Many various times. people and got their stories exactly, yes exactly. yes it's oral history exactly so when i, I was looking uh, for some specific uh, date or some context about what I was telling, I was writing, I go to a book in particular or a person to, to make it accurate. And that's it. But my first source is people. It's, it's, it's to sad, it's so how many, how many people did you interview? Um, roughly, roughly. I don't know, about 12, 13. Oh, were they happy to be? Did they welcome you? You know, because you'd shown an interest in their culture, or were they uh, sort of suspicious? How? How? What was their reaction? Well, the reaction it was very positive, very open, flexible. Because well, oh, because I don't know if because of that, but my approaching it was a step by step, uh, very with all my respect and and first like a uh, in a informal uh, treatment, drinking together, eating together. Were the something. older people you interviewed, the older generation? Mm, some are, or oh, there are several generations, uh, three generations. This is a younger generation. Uh -huh. There are two musicians, they make a uh, rap musician, rap uh, very, tra uh, with, of course, an uh, uh, American influence or North American influence, but trying to make it in their own language. Right, um, right, right. All musicians as well. Uh huh. Um, about Do they have their own kind of music influenced by African music? Yes, totally. Okay, they, okay. Th they know a lot about African music, about sukus, and they had their own music called champeta. What is uh, champeta? <laughs> has a big influence from... Uh, it's a pity um, we couldn't hear some champetta. Um, okay, well, we'll talk more about the music in part two. Thank you very much.